There's a curious incident in this week's rather crowded Torah portion. The people have been complaining again, we're familiar with this theme by now, and this time God sends a plague of snakes to bite and torment them. Moses is told then to make a brass image of a snake and put it on a pole and walk with it through the camp, whereupon anybody who looks at the snake is immediately cured. Now, you can imagine that Jewish commentators have a problem with this on many levels. It's strange. It looks like magic. It looks like idolatry. They're very bothered with the fact that it actually seems to work. And at the end of one of the Mishnayot in the tractate Rosh Hashanah, they come up with their own explanation. They say, were the people looking at the serpent? Of course they weren't looking at the serpent. The serpent was irrelevant. What they did was they lifted up their faces towards their Father in heaven. And so their prayers for healing ended up in the right place. And the serpent was irrelevant. The thought that I've been holding and wondering about this week is the idea of how many things we have in our lives that are our contemporary idols. Our music playlists, for example, the latest piece of technology, our car, our home, our garden that we persist on watering even in a drought, and so on and so forth. And I wonder if our lives could possibly be changed on a day-to-day -day basis if, when looking at all those material things, we realized what the rabbis wanted the people to realize about the brass serpent. That it's not about the stuff, it's about the intention. So that when we look at our car or our iPad or when we plug in and play our playlist, we do so with an intention that says, it's not about this thing. It's about where I place my mind and where I place my thoughts. I wonder if our lives would change at all if we were able to look past the brass serpent or its contemporary equivalent and instead lift up our eyes to something that is really powerful and really meaningful. That was your Torah in two.